And we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the PSBTA Technical Solutions Webinar Series. My name is Martha Ellis, and I'm the Executive Director for the Public Safety Broadband Technology Association, or the PSBTA. As an association, our primary objective is to work as an end user advocate for all primary and extended primary FirstNet users. This includes all first responders and service providers who support response, mitigation, and recovery during emergencies. We've created this webinar series in an effort to bring you the most current and accurate information on all aspects of broadband use for public safety personnel, including the latest developments in technology specific to the ecosystem. Today's webinar is the fourth in a series of 12 specifically designed to not only showcase the network, but many of the FirstNet approved applications, which can be found in the FirstNet app catalog. The FirstNet built with AT&T Lean In webinars are all about helping you optimize the FirstNet network, assuring the highest level of preparedness and reliable communications. If you've missed any of the previous presentations, please feel free to visit the PSBTA.org to watch the archived webinars. Before we get started, I have a couple housekeeping uh, items for our attendees. All attendees have been automatically muted to reduce background noise. Any questions should be submitted directly to us through the questions function, which is located at the bottom of the menu on the right side of your screen. Questions will be answered at the end of our presentations. We will attempt to answer as many questions as possible, yet still stay within our allotted hour. We will follow up with any questions that do not get answered during the live portion of the webinar after we are finished up today. If you should have further questions when the webinar is over, we will also provide emails for the presenters at the end so you can follow up at your convenience. Also in the panel to the right of your screen, I would like to point out that there are handouts available that should be downloaded prior to the conclusion of the webinar. Today's public safety professionals have a lot on their minds and plenty to prepare for. Compounded with everything else that is happening in our country, this is also the time of the year when we start thinking about our kids going back to school. Today, we'll be discussing three different applications from the FirstNet app catalog designed to help school administrators and first responders provide the highest level of safety and protection for our students. Our presenters are Kelly Moore, Director of Public Safety Leadership with Crisis Go, Matt Bertura, Founder and CEO for Predictable Ride, and Raul Cifuentes, Enhanced Push to Talk Product Marketing Manager for AT&T. In bringing the FirstNet app catalog to life, they'll discuss their software capabilities, give demonstrations, and share use case scenarios to help you make critical applications decisions for your agency. We also have Steve Devine, Director for FirstNet Strategy and Policy, who will take questions on FirstNet, our nation's most reliable wireless public safety network, and the linchpin in successfully leveraging these kinds of tools. With that, I will turn the time over to Kelly Moore to get us started with our webinar, Returning to School, Are You Ready? Part one. Thank you, Martha. Thanks for the introduction and thanks to FirstNet for all they do to keep us safe during a crisis and an emergency. Crisis Go became a FirstNet listed app two years ago as more and more schools needed to have a better redundancy during a critical incident as a major concern point was when local wireless towers became overloaded. The combination of the Crisis Go app and FirstNet created a gold standard response that is fast, reliable, and efficient. During a critical incident event, not only do you need to get the alert, but you need to stay connected, account for staff and students, and manage the incident from start through to the end to reunification if required. Coming from 34 years in law enforcement, I understand the need to have a whole community approach to crisis communications and incident management. As you can see, from the screen, Crisis Go is much more than an alert tool. It is built on an emergency communications platform, connects to other systems through an open API, and provides staff with data from student information systems, staff systems to keep people safe. We know there are fundamental components in every emergency. We just have to rethink how each component integrates into the current crisis and capitalize on those components. That is exactly what we did here. With the foundation of the emergency communications platform, 
roster, employee data, and an all-device approach to communications, Crisis Go quickly added the safety check-in, an intelligent survey tool that extends the safety network of the school to parents and other key community stakeholders. And through this tool, Crisis Go offers staff and student health checks, protective personal equipment supply chain status updates, and surveys of staff concerns around returning to work in a COVID-19 environment. All these include trend analysis, risk escalation, and real-time two-way communication between reporters and school administrators. While working with the Illinois Association of School Administrators, Crisis Go also developed a digital solution, the, I, the safety iPath, a pre-certification and validation system that provides a faster and more effective method for students and staff to enter a school facility. Let me take you through a quick demonstration uh, using a high school student. Every morning, the parents of the student will get an email, one for each student they have in the school, that links them to a survey questionnaire uh, that they must complete to certify that their student is eligible to go back to school. The parent completes that survey and then based upon the answers that they give, the student is then uh, either told to stay home or they're given a green digital badge that will allow them to enter the school. The student, in this case a high school student, hops in their car and they head to school and enter the screening process. Once they enter the screening process, they can take their digital badge that's on their uh, device, their iPhone or their smartphone, and scan that device into a scanner at the school. If they don't have a device, they can use their student ID as long as it has a QR code or a barcode associated with that identification. If you have smaller children or children that need to take the bus, they can scan the iPass on the bus or they can scan it at school. And using the capabilities of our partner, Predictable Ride, you can uh, look at the, the when the bus is going to show up at your stop and uh, go to that bus stop at the, at the right time to make sure that you're limiting your exposure. If a student does not have a device, we can do that manually. We can also look at printing a roster with a Q code, uh, QR code that's associated with each student. The teacher then could scan that QR code and then check the status of their students. And we would use this primarily for uh, elementary school age children, those without access to devices, or even uh, those with special uh, students and staff with special needs. They would enter the scanning or the screening process. And once they are validated to go through the process and enter the school, there would be a temperature taken to verify that the student is in fact eligible to enter the school. Once they enter the school, the data is collected in real time and that data could be used to identify trends, uh, identify those students who have um, not participated in the process, so um, unresponsive students, and we can look at staff trends, student trends, and also your um, exposure trends. From there, we can add a roster, and through um, or in the event that somebody is or has been um, tested positive or is explain or displaying symptoms we can do a reverse engineer of the student rosters and see who that student may have come into contact with. From there, we can uh, notify public health and we can 
also look at um, the potential exposure and make notifications to the students who have uh, po potentially been exposed uh, during that class. And we can do that back to um, the uh, 48 hours, which is the recommendation of the CDC. Now, going back to the survey itself, we can, and uh, many schools have asked us to send out different emails based upon an A-B schedule, an alternate schedule, remote learning, and also in different languages. So that we can do it in uh, English and one primary secondary language. So the system is robust and uh, really allows us to work through the entry process, which is going to be a big concern for our students, our teachers, our community, and our schools. So with that, I'd like to um, hand it over to our partner with Predictable Ride, Matt, um, who's going to give his um, presentation. Thank you very much, Kelly. My name is Matt Baturo with Predictable Ride. I'm the founder and CEO, and I'm happy to be here to work with our great partners here with FirstNet and in this great FirstNet ecosystem. Um, I'm proud to say we integrate in well with Crisis Go. We run with the enhanced push to talk uh, that you'll hear from Raul later. Um, and so SafeBus is an app that runs on your FirstNet Android device, whether that be a Sonom, a, unit N350 or a Samsung tablet. And what it does is it is a, a live bus and rider tracking application, and it does so much more. And so what are the different types of rider tracking? If you're not familiar with it, there's two main types of, of rider tracking. There's active rider tracking, and that's where the child uh, or the, uh, the rider carries a a dongle, an electronic dongle that uh, sends off a signal and then the bus just picks up uh, when that child gets on and off the bus and so that they are automatically tracked and this is great for, for especially for younger riders but when you have a lot of kids getting on and off the bus at, at particular stops. But then we all, there's also passive tracking and that's where uh, the rider or the driver actually interacts with the device, uh, whether the, the child is scanning a a QR code like what you saw in Crisis Go's uh, demonstration, or if the, if the child doesn't have their ID that day and the, the driver or the bus aid is selecting that particular rider from a list and, and marking them on or off the bus. And one of the great things about uh, active and passive tracking in terms of safe bus is that we can support both and we can support them both concurrently. So for part of your, your school population, uh, the you can pass out the active trackers, uh, say for the younger children, those that, that need that extra part where they can just strap it to their backpack and, and be tracked. And then for your older kids, like your, your high school riders that are used to carrying IDs, you can issue them uh, a QR code that they can stick on, on their school ID and use that to, to scan as they get on and off the bus. And this way we can leave the decision on, on how schools wanna mix that uh, active and passive tracking up, up to them. One of the great things about tracking kids as they're riding the bus is now you can perform contact tracing based off of live and real information of ridership. And so through Predictable Ride and Safe Bus, uh, as well as the APIs that we've opened up to Crisis Go, uh, you can go in and quickly identify who were the other riders that were riding with a student that may have shown up in the nurse's office and, and uh, reported symptoms that could be related to COVID or could be for something completely different, such as measles or chickenpox or norovirus or lice, et cetera. And it's a way to quickly and, and accurately um, find out who, who's been riding your buses, who's riding with those riders, and if there is an event then you can collect that information and share it with the appropriate people, whether it's public health officials or other school officials or uh, notification of, of parents if appropriate. So for schools, SafeBus powered by Predictable Ride 
provides fleet and rider tracking, onboard analytics, live onboard video using the Android devices, camera and, and audio. Uh, so you could be uh, monitoring your buses and check in, check in remotely from your, from your desktop uh, running the predictable ride uh, console or uh, on your smartphone if you're out and about and you just need to, to be able to do that. We also provide a parent app that gives live bus location of the, of the bus that's associated with their child. Um, it gives stop alerts, uh, provides notification when that child gets on and off the bus of when and where that happens. But we go beyond that. And for public safety officials, schools can share live bus location and rider information with their, uh, with their police departments or, or uh, fire departments. So we've had this uh, done several times where the school wants to keep the, those, those public safety officials in the know. And so they can, they can share access to those uh, groups as, as they wish. In addition, in the event of, of an emergency, um, live streaming video and audio can be sent uh, along with the bus information and passenger manifest information from the school directly to first responders in the field. So they can pull that up on their first net uh, device uh, and, and be able to get that information that will help them make better decisions in, in, the, in those critical moments. As I mentioned earlier, we integrate in great with Crisis Go. From our alert uh, button, you can trigger the Crisis Go safety network uh, by uh, and, and send and pass down that, that uh, video that's streamed live, the audio that's streamed live, passenger manifest information, that live information about where the bus is, and it's all done using a patented technology that we have for, uh, for school buses to be able to do that. And I'm really excited to offer this back to school special um, where schools can try Safe Bus for free on any of their special ed buses when they're using the Unit N350. And this is a great device because it's mounted right in the bus. Um, so you know it's always there. It's always powered when it needs to be. It's a, you, know, you pair it up with FirstNet's uh, electronic, uh, enhanced push to, to talk solution, and it becomes a full LMR replacement. Or you can use it uh, in addition to LMR, uh, totally up to you. Uh, it helps, you can do active and passive tracking for students as they get on and off the bus. It comes with our companion um, bus aid app as well. And it, as I mentioned, it works great. Uh, the Unit N350 works great with SafeBus and Crisis Go. Certainly love to tell you more information about this at any time. Uh, you can get our, our information here. You can reach out to me directly. Um, and I'd be happy to set up uh, follow-ons and, and show you more about this, this wonderful uh, solution. And uh, certainly talk up all the great benefits of the first net uh, ecosystem and all the great things that happen there. So thank you very much. And so at this point, I would like to pass the presentation over to Raul, and he's going to tell you more about AT&T's Enhanced Push to Talk and all the great uh, capabilities that come with that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Raul Cifuentes. I'm an AT&T Marketing Product Manager for AT&T Enhanced Push to Talk. It's an honor to uh, be here and talk to you about this product. Um, and today I'm going to talk about how EPTT Enhanced Push to Talk is a one-to-one or one-to-many uh, group communication solution, right? Uh, gets things done quickly and helps our customers, the school systems, to get things done right. Um, it helps improving working collaboration and productivity. Um, before I talk about the value proposition of AT&T Enhanced Push to Talk, um, we're going to go over some use cases and also talk about some of the devices compatibility. Um, I also have to say thank you to um, the team that supports EPTT and makes all the magic um, happen behind the scenes. Um, unfortunate to work with um, many uh, individuals in the field um, uh, with many years of experience, a lot of passion and dedication for the product and the fact they are serving um, our community our heroes, um, all the way from partnership with Kodia Morola, which is our developer, 
AT&T technical support, um, of course, our sales dedicated team and customer care operations and many other uh, team members that work behind the scenes to um, to deploy this um, to the market. Um, we grow uh, as, a, as a product. Um, we have uh, approximately a decade of experience in the market. It's an AT&T branded solution. Um, we now offer more than push and talk communication, right? We we group the, we evolved the solution. We now do uh, text messaging. We do location sharing and of course voice communication and tracking, all in one application. But not only we also increase the feature sets of the solution, but also um, we. Um, increase the ecosystem. Um, it's not just a simple EPTT application that you download from, from Google Play or, or the App Store. It's an ecosystem that in, involves um, devices, involves application, involves um, um, a corporate admin tool, um, dispatch solution, um, LMR interoperability all that can help um, our school systems and our customers to get the things done and essentially just boost the bottom line. On this page, um, you can click also on this promotional video that I have included in there to give you um, an overview of the EPTT application. Let's talk about how we offer EPTT and AT&T to our customers. We have two tiers. We have EPTT Standard and EPTT Advanced. This is a high level of the features associated with each tier. On the EPTT standard, as you can see on the left side of the screen, these are the key features. We have over 40 features um, that are part of the EPTT standard. Um, anything from broadcast calling, scanning, geofencing, uh, you know, HD voice, one-touch calling. But we also offer EPTT Advanced, which have some features that are based on 3GPP and CPTT um, solutions, such as emergency calling. Uh, user check and monitor, enable and disable, discrete listening, and then of course um, we also support the LMR interoperability with different protocols such as ISSI, CSSI, and ROIP. Here I can give you an overview of the emergency calling, um, ideal for any type of staff members in the, um, in the school system, anywhere from teachers, uh, counselors, you know, library, media specialists, coaches, uh, nurses, medical, maintenance, school police, right? Um, now that a school is um, is reopening and, and the students have the option in, in, in certain uh, markets and certain states uh, of online classes, this is an ideal, ideal solution to increase the communication with either substitutes or um, online um, uh, teachers um, to make sure that they all connected. Um, we have emergency calling. Emergency calling is a solution that a user can declare an emergency and he prioritize the conversation on the platform. Um, um, the, uh, the receivers um, will get a distinct tone and also will get some type of uh, visual uh, banner as you can see on the left side of the screen. Um, and then, you know, uh, the user can set that receiver um, as, as they need it, depending on, 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 on the type of communication, the emergency communication. Another useful feature is the user check and monitor. I think about school buses, for example. Um, when a driver has an emergency, um, they can go ahead and enable this feature and authorize users or dispatchers can see the location and they can also see different things on the network such as the signal strain, the battery to make sure that um, everything is connected properly. I feel that we have two different type of users out there. We have those users that use push-to-talk broadband uh, systems. Um, they are also familiar with the LMR technology, right? The land mobile radio. Um, what that means is that they are already used to the look and feel of having uh, zones and channels that they can just switch um, when when they do that with with the LMR. What we offer, and one of the values of PPTT here, is that we have a dual user interface, all in one application. There is no need to download multiple applications. If the user feels that he or she feels more comfortable with an LMR experience where they, they, they know to switch channels or zones, they can opt to use the LMR user experience, and I'm highlighting it here on the left side of the screen. We also offer the basic user experience. It doesn't have all of the bells and whistles 
of the um, channel selection, um, but they can also do uh, one to one and one to many. And on both user interfaces, they can not only do push and talk um, one to one or one to many, but also they can send text message, they can track the location, they can share the location, they can they can send um, also um, some type of voicemails. Um, Going back to the um, LMR user experience, not only we um, digitalize the experience of an LMR, um, but we also have some um, devices and OEMs that offer um, a, a different experience with this uh, particular user interface. One example is the Motorola L11, that it has an inbuilt uh, channel selector there with voice annunciation that you can switch from channel one to channel two, and it gives also the, uh, a, a better experience um, to those customers. And we also have some accessories that have that type of uh, channel selector. Moving on to the dispatch, this is a great solution. Um, going back to the use case of the of uh, school police of or or or, or buses transportation. Essentially, we offer a dispatch solution, which is a portable web solution. Um, the features are essentially the same as a mobile application. Um, we offer also web solution on a standard and advanced, plus the dispatcher has other bells and whistles in there, such as they can record conversations or they can create geofencing and have different permissions in order to, to, um, to meet uh, the communication needs. LMR interoperability, of course we do that. Um, we have many years of experience partnering with Motorola and all of our partners behind the scenes. We support the three different protocols, ISSI, CSSI, and ROIP. And then of course, let's talk about devices, right? We also support um, multiple versions of devices and operating systems, including Android, uh, iOS devices and um, also what we call feature phones or push to talk centric devices. Um, we also added a uh, unique device, which is the UV350 that is made by Sillada. And then um, this is a unique uh, device. Uh, you can all relate to, um, to this. Um, let me just run it real quick. But essentially what it is is an in-vehicle device and it provides a, a, a good solution to the drivers. You can see here, um, essentially it's a Google or an Android device, full Android device with EPTT supported. And they, you can also put multiple applications and have your own ecosystem of solutions. Um, it comes with uh, some accessories, including the, um, the potato mic, um, and it also has different antennas um, and features associated to make sure that the customer or the user is um, has the eyes on the on the road, but at the same time has a full communication um, back to the dispatcher in case of emergency, in case of a, an update, or uh, whatever the case may be. It also comes with a alert or SOS button. A really good solution, and I think that is ideal for this particular audience. So. Uh, we talk about EPTT. Let's just do a recap of um, why AT&T Enhanced Push to Talk is, is an attractive option and a cost-effective option um, to, to uh, augment um, LMR uh, systems. Uh, number one, the application is FirstNet certified, um, available in the FirstNet catalog, and it's an AT&T branded solution, and that means that it meets um, um, security, reliability, and support standards are expected um, as a uh, with with a nationwide carrier um, committed to uh, FirstNet, we do have a robust selection of smartphones, tablets. Um, at the same time, we also offer um, unique uh, services. Some of our customers they they wish to have, for example, a feature phone where the users don't have any type of access to browse the internet or place cellular calls. In other words, it becomes a radio over the LTE network. We offer what we call EPTT only on feature phones, and that is one of the value proposition. Uh, we provide a very comprehensive operations and administration tools um, as the corporate admin tool. This is a tool, a web-based tool, where the administrator can set different permissions. They can set different um, 
uh, groups, alerts, uh, just manage the communication system, as well as uh, the dispatch solution, which I uh, review with you. Um, interoperability with LMR radios, again, to augment uh, the communication. And then, of course, we have a dedicated support, not only on the sales team that, that, that can help you with your needs, but at the same time, our customer service support available to help you with your communication needs and EPTT. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It has been a, a pleasure and again, an honor to talk to you about EPTT. That concludes my presentation and now I'm gonna handle it to Martha. All right, great. Thank you all so much. Those were extremely informative presentations and I appreciate the time that you took to to put those together. So now we're going to take the second half of our webinar and address some questions. So um, first and foremost, I want to start with Steve Devine uh, with FirstNet, just so we can get a little foundational uh, information about the network itself. Steve, can you give us a brief overview of FirstNet and how we've arrived uh, to where we are right now and, and maybe just a tiny glimpse into the future? Sure. Uh, thanks, Martha. Uh, uh, great to be with everybody here today. Uh, FirstNet, um, uh, be, you know, is the nationwide public safety broadband network. Uh, we were awarded the contract from the federal government in March of 2017. Uh, today, we're at 1.3 million connections and continuing to grow. Over 12,000 public safety agencies uh, participate in FirstNet today. That continues to evolve and grow. Uh, the app catalog is over 100 devices uh, specifically. Uh, 100 applications in the uh, app catalog, as well as over 100 devices that are available for FirstNet uh, uh, performance and capabilities. Uh, our our build-out continues ahead of schedule. We're obligated to the government to make uh, certain build-out requirements, and we've been ahead of schedule all along on all of those build-out. Uh, uh, the network really provides pr priority and preemption uh, for uh, first responders and those that support first responders, and we'll get into a little bit of that later on with regard to uh, some extended primary uh, uh, information, but uh, uh, the, the the network uh, continues to evolve, uh, it continues to grow, and 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 agencies are continue to recognize the benefits that that the first net network offers. So, in, in the context of our schools, and um, maybe some folks that are on the webinar today that aren't as familiar with the whole concept of primary and extended primary. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? What is the difference between those two uh, identifiers as a FirstNet user? Sure, uh, it, great question. The uh, the eligibility for users on the network is 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 broken out into two categories. There's primary users, which are police, fire, EMS, uh, emergency management, and uh, 911 or PSAPs or emergency communication centers. Uh, and then there's extended primaries. And really, the easiest way to to kind of recognize an extended primary is somebody who supports first responders. Uh, a great example are, are utilities. When there's a, a vehicular accident uh, on the roadway and there's uh, there's uh, power lines down, uh, the utilities are critical to provide a service to get the uh, first responders in a position where they can do their job. So while the utilities may not all the may not solely their sole purpose may not be uh, to support first responders, there are times when they are needed and they are required after hurricanes and tornadoes and and reconstitution of of uh, of, uh, of services. Uh, obviously, they're critical. So think of extended primary as somebody who, as part of their overall role has a responsibility in supporting first responders. And, and school administrators are another great example that during a school emergency or a school crisis, the school administrator is gonna take a role that's gonna support the first responder, uh, the first responders that are, that are uh, supporting that event. So the ability for a school administrator or a school resource officer or any of those folks that, that will work on a day-to-day -day basis may have a role in supporting first responders. Uh, if there's a question, anybody has a question as to whether or not they're eligible for FirstNet and under the definition of an extended primary user, uh, there's an eligibility process there. So get with your local FirstNet solutions consultant and they'll be able to provide information as to whether or not uh, the use that you see as supporting first responders is one in which they would qualify for FirstNet. Great, thank you. And so FirstNet's gone to great lengths to uh, even create a tiering per se within 
the FirstNet network itself from the sounds of it with the extended primary and the primary user. So can you talk a little bit about the process? So regarding FirstNet Central and talk a little bit about FirstNet Central and maybe the control panel a little bit and how does an extended primary user get uplifted? And um, in addition to that, um, how long is that uplift active and can they uh, extend that if necessary? Uh, great question. So FirstNet Central is really the, the, the customer's uh, online portal and the ability to kind of interface with FirstNet and to leverage the resources that FirstNet offers. Uh, it offers the, the, uh, the customer the ability to look at network status, to see outages and to see the performance of the network. There's also overlays for weather and flooding and a number of other things that they can actually toggle in and back and forth and look what's going on with regard to the network in their area. Uh, the, the FirstNet Central offers them the ability for both user and group management, uh, the ability to add devices, services, billing questions, any of those features and functionalities, how to manage applications, how to distribute applications, how to work with uh, mobile device management solutions, and then and something that Raul made mention of, uh, the ability to manage push-to-talk users, to create groups, to establish groups, to change the users that are participating in groups. So FirstNet Central really is the portal for for a FirstNet customer to go in and make those uh, changes that they need uh, based on their needs at that time. The uplift functionality is also a capability within FirstNet Central. It will allow a an agency administrator to uplift its own primary users as well as uplift extended primary users that may be responding in that same incident to a higher level of access and priority on the network. So it may take uh, the police and fire and uplift them to a, to a level where the utility or the school administrator is also uplifted to a higher level. And for the duration of that incident, which can be 24 hours and can be extended beyond, uh, for the duration of that incident, they'll not just be prioritized on the network, they'll be the highest priority on the network in that specific area for the duration of the incident. So there's the ability to do that after a period of time, the administrator will get pinged. Uh, do these users still need to be uplifted to that level and whether or not this, the, the incident's still in play or not? But uh, there's a management and the ability to utilize the network and manage the network so your users get the access they need when they need it. I, I find it fascinating that FirstNet has actually uh, given that much control and access to the FirstNet subscriber. Is there a philosophy behind that? Well, you know, uh, FirstNet is really designed and to, to support those that, that, that help us and keep us safe. So for us to put the, in, the, the capabilities in the network, but not give the users access to those capabilities, really, it really doesn't okay. make sense. So so our, our, our charge is not just to make them available to the network, but give them access to the tools they need because different agencies in different areas have different priorities and may need to access different tools. Our job is to make those tools available to them. Outstanding. All right, one final question on the network itself. Uh, schools create a, a high density populations in our urban and our rural areas. Does FirstNet provide the same level of service in less populated areas? What's the vision there? So that's a great question. So you know, we we we're we're the nationwide public safety broadband network, and 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 we, as I indicated, we've got coverage requirements as per our contract with the federal government, and we're we're way ahead of schedule on building those out. AT and T's network has been in place for it covers over 99% of the population of the U.S. today on our regular network, and Band 14 build out is slowly getting to that point as well. Are there areas where we're, we, we may not have the coverage that we need for a specific incident? Absolutely, and we have the response operations group. We have a separate group that's, uh, when an incident occurs, whether it be man-made or natural natural disaster, we have teams of, of, of people and resources that can be deployed to support those areas, either those areas that had coverage and the hurricane came in and knocked the coverage out, or in areas where we need additional coverage or capacity, we've got resources that we can bring in to meet those needs, and we've got a timeline in which we have to meet those deliverable needs in those locations across the uh, across the U.S. So whether or not we have existing coverage and there's more capacity needed uh, for that specific incident, or we don't have we we, we don't meet that uh, that coverage requirement initially, we've got deployable resources that we can bring in to uh, to make that happen.
incredible. So every nook and cranny of this country is going to be uh, covered. And you mentioned Band 14, just for the listeners. I want to make sure everybody understands that is synonymous with the First Net Network. Okay, um, I'm going to get you off the hook, Steve, and, and go sure. ahead and let's talk a little bit more about the actually applications that we uh, covered today. So Kelly, a uh, question goes to you. How do schools use pre-certification with hybrid school models? So there's several different hybrid models out there. Um, alternating schedules where a student will come on Monday, Wednesday, and maybe alternate Fridays. Some schools are doing uh, Monday, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and everyone is remote on Fridays. So there's all of these different models. So the screening app has been developed so that we can accommodate those those different hybrid remote learning models. And when the surveys are sent out, they're sent out in a way that reminds the parent when they're filling out the survey that their student is either due in school today, please complete the survey, or your student is scheduled to be a remote learner today. However, please also complete the survey because we want to collect that data on a daily basis so we can start tracking exposures and trends at the earliest possible moment because sometimes, uh, depending on how your schedule is uh, configured, it may be two or three days before your student gets back to school. And we wanna know er as early as possible when uh, they start showing symptoms or we have an exposure. Yeah, tracking is actually <laughs> probably one of the things that people are most frightened about with sending their kids back to school, right? So having right. this mechanism in place is, is truly gonna be, uh, hopefully instill a little bit more confidence uh, in getting the kids back into the classroom. So appreciate the work you've done on this application. Um, another question is, uh, will Safety iPass allow schools to send emails out to parents in different languages? It does. Uh, right now, we support the primary English language and whatever language is the next most used language in uh, the school district. Um, we have the capabilities of building that out, but right now, um, because of the urgency to get the application out there and, and get people back to school, we're supporting one additional language. So, um, and the school district designates what that second language is, but the parents designate what their primary preferences, whether it's English or this secondary identified language, like in California, it's Spanish. And so if the, the parents identify their um, prior, their preferred communication language as Spanish, then they can get that uh, all of those uh, surveys and their correspondence and emails in Spanish, and then it's all compiled in the same data set. So they're not two separate data sets. Okay, well, that's going to clearly be very ha uh, helpful. Um, one of the things I think that um, people think of in this scanning and tracking type of uh, an environment that we're in is the extraordinary bottlenecking potential, right, for uh, having kids lined up in front of the school trying to get in and uh, any other areas that they're moving from that requires the scanning. Can you have multiple scanners in front of the building to speed up the number of students that can actually enter per minute? Yeah, so you can either have uh, dedicated scanners for that purpose to speed people through the, the process. The um, Also embedded in the app itself, is the capabilities of scanning from an individual's staff's iPhone or smartphone. So they can pull that up and they can scan directly. So as many staff members if you, as you have with the app, you can have that many scanners or you can have multiple scanners. And it really depends on uh, the, the capability is limited by what you need uh, because you have to, figure out what's an acceptable time frame to start to finish to get those those students and staff into into um, campus right so based right. upon your need and we're using about 30 minutes as an acceptable time frame so but mm -hmm. if you have 2500 students that's going to take a lot longer than 200 students so you could uh, scale that accordingly 
Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that makes a great deal of sense. All right. Great. Well, um, I'm going to move on to Matt now. So, um, Matt, we have a few questions here for you regarding predictable ride. Uh, the first one being, what happens if a child forgets her his or her uh, bus ride ID? Uh, do they still uh, will they still be tracked? Oh, thank you, Martha. That's a great question, and it's one that comes up often. Uh, as a parent of, of uh, young children, I know that they have the uh, the capability to lose things in, in ways that I didn't even know was, was possible, but they do. And so there's a couple different ways that we support that. Um, and yes, if they if the child doesn't have their ID, they can still be tracked. Um, what the driver or the bus aide would do would go ahead and either select their name, the child's name straight from the uh, passenger manifest and just Press the press their their name and and track them as on or off, or uh, if the child isn't on the manifest uh, for some reason, they can look them up by a, a a pin number, and so the child could let them know what the last four digits of their mom's uh, cell phone is or something along those lines, and they can look up the child that way and again board the child uh, as they get on or off the bus using either the, the driver's device or or the bus aid's device. Okay, fabulous. Thank you. So, um, in reference to the driver, is there a way to collect COVID-related data, screening questions for the driver? Yeah, absolutely. And so, one of the the unique capabilities that we have is the ability to uh, create custom questionnaire forms that can be pushed out to the driver, the bus aides, and they can be related and linked in right to the the driver's pre-trip uh, reports or post-trip reports. But these can uh, be added with, with custom questions that can go in there directly related to COVID. These are, are special, uh, you can set these questions up so that depending on the answer to a question, it can be set to trigger uh, automatically and, and notify a preset list of uh, school officials so either by email or by text message. So they'll know right away if for some reason uh, somebody gets on the bus, uh, and then the questionnaire uh, asks uh, whether that child is uh, showing symptoms of, of COVID and the, uh, the school could then react immediately to that situation even before the bus uh, arrives at the school to, to best handle that situation. Okay, great. And then do first responders have to have the Safe Bus app on their phones to access the live video and audio? No, they don't. And this is part of our patented technology to be able to, to share streaming a video uh, um, and audio and access to bus, uh, other bus information like location and, and passenger manifest by being able to push that out over a, over a text message or an email uh, directly to uh, first responders so that they can press on, press on that link, pull it up, and they would get access right, right there uh, to that live video and, and audio and other information. And this is a special type of access, Martha. It's, it's temporary and revocable by the school. So at any point, if the school decides, uh, realizes you know, the incident is over, uh, these um, additional people don't need access to this information anymore, they can close down the connections right then and there and uh, to ensure the, the privacy and the safety of, of the children uh, and, and in those situations. But of course, you want to be able to provide the right information to the right people at the right time so they can make the best decisions to help the kids. Right. Well, I'm really glad you addressed those security concerns because clearly that that will be a, an issue for parents uh, in particular. Um, but about the camera systems, uh, what brand of camera system must be on the bus to live stream the video and audio to the school officials and first responders? This is one of the great parts of our system is that we don't require you to have additional hardware on the device. Uh, on the bus, what we're going to do is, is we're going to use the, the camera and audio that's available through that FirstNet Android device to start to, to stream from and collect that information. And so it just uh, turns, you know, your, your device is on the bus uh, that's doing the tracking. Uh, and we can go ahead and just remotely turn that video camera on and start collecting that audio uh, for the school. And then they'll go ahead and, and take it from there. Great. It sounds like you have uh, built in a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, capabilities that 
don't involve an extensive build out, <laughs> which clearly is a reflection of being aware of their budget. So appreciate that as well. Okay, Raul, I'm gonna move on to you for the last couple of questions before we move into sure. the wrap up. So, so in speaking about the enhanced push to talk experience on devices, um, can you speak a little bit about priority software and what the uh, EPTT experience is like on devices that have priority software? Excuse me, um, proprietary, my mistake. I misread that, proprietary. Okay, yes, I, I, uh, I, great. I, going, what, <laughs> what is she talking about? <laughs> no worries, um, great question. Um, <laughs> It's all about options to the customer, right? Um, we offer the application on Android, full Android devices, iOS devices, and devices that we call it the feature phones or PTT centric, which are the um, proprietary operating system devices. Essentially, these are simple devices without a touch screen, uh, without access to Google Play to download the application or anything else, right? You think about your Sonom XP5S or your Kyocera uh, flip phones. The application is preloaded, and, and that is one of the focus that the, the, of, of, of the product and what I tell my team to make sure that we make it seamless for the customer in order to deploy. Our job is to provide uh, the tools to, to the customers, um, uh, to our heroes, to make the, the to utilize the solution. Um, easy deployment with uh, feature fonts um, because it's already preloaded on the device as part of the operating system. And um, in, in, in that is the value that we have. Um, in, in, and again, going back to the conversation of um, the, the, the relationship and the partnership that we have with, with, the, operate, with the OEMs and the operating systems as well. Um, it's preloaded, um, turn it on, you have, you're connected to, to a cell site, um, and then from there you can just, once EPTT is provisioned, you can just uh, click on the application and start using it. There's no need to do side loading of the application on those devices. No, that's very helpful. Sorry if I put you in a tailspin by misreading that question. No worries. Okay, the, yep. final, the final question I have for you today is, uh, I'm sure a lot of folks are curious about getting their hands on the stuff and kind of test driving uh, before they commit to purchasing. Um, do you offer any demo services to try the product? Absolutely, absolutely. I understand that, you know, when we talk about communications and going from one solution to another solution, it's a, it's a, it's a conversation that has to be um, reviewed properly, right, and understand what is going to fit the needs of the customer. So yes, um, I encourage the individuals to connect with the FirstNet representative to make sure that they take advantage of the demo services that we offer that includes EPTT, and, and, and we can also engage the, um, um, the OEMs um, in the case, for example, of the Seattle Wireless in order to do some type of demos. Okay, hey, fantastic. Uh, at this time, I'm actually going to pose that same question to Matt and then Kelly, and then also uh, give you a few minutes to just uh, give some closing comments. Matt, would you like to start with the demo question? Sure, I'd be happy to. At Predictable Ride, we're a strong believer in, in trying out the product and, and trying it before you buy it. We really want you to, to take the look, take the time to look at it and use it, and uh, we're fully supportive of, of no-cost demos. To, to get that get you that that access to it and, and look at it and then we believe that once you try it out you're really going to like it and that uh, it will be a product that you'll want for your schools great kelly so since our uh, is an app-based system we're using existing um hardware for that and um so but we can set up demos and we can certainly uh have people run through a demo demonstration of that app because it's uh, important to realize that we're talking about the COVID environment and, and getting kids to school and teachers to school, make them feel comfortable about um, going to school safely. But we also have to realize that all of the other crises that are potential at our schools aren't going away. And so it's important that we, we understand that the safety i pass is one component of the overall safety communications platform and emergency platform within our schools and how that works um, and transitions from uh, the total incident management from start to uh, 911 call to response by emergency personnel 
uh, getting them the proper information and situational awareness um, to where they can stabilize the situation and assist the schools and then hand that whole incident back to the school. So it's important that people understand how that all transitions. And so we certainly can do demos with that and make sure that um, that works for everybody in play. And in fact, we have solutions where we can um, have uh, law enforcement, the individual officers, fire departments, and dispatch monitor and uh, communicate as an incident, whether it's uh, COVID or um, some other crisis, whether natural or man-made is occurring. Yeah, and Kelly, you make an excellent point. Um, these crises are not siloed, they are compounding. And so that just really adds to the complexity of what the first responder and these school administrators are facing uh, every day when they bring these kids back into that uh, school environment. So we have uh, just a few minutes. I'd like to just run down the line, give everybody an opportunity to give some closing comments, and, and then I will conclude the webinar. So Steve, would you like to uh, give us some closing comments on the FirstNet network? Sure. Thanks, Martha. Um, yeah, uh, for the FirstNet network continues to support first responders. Uh, uh, we've entered into a 25-year contract with the federal government, so this process is going to continue. It's going to evolve. We want to make sure we get first responders input, so the FirstNet evolution is is something that uh, that uh, best represents their needs going forward. So, uh, if you if you have any questions about FirstNet or thoughts or or things that could make it better for you or your agency, get with your FirstNet Solutions consultant. And again, we thank the the PSBTA for their support. Thank you, uh, Raul. Uh, I, I definitely echo Steve Devine here, and thank you so much for uh, Public Safety Broadband Technology Association support. Um, we 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 definitely keep growing the product. Um, it's an honor to talk to you about this product. I, I encourage you to contact our FirstNet consultants and give us a try um, with different devices and different technology and help you with the communication needs. Um, this particular topic is, um, is, uh, is, is close to me. I have three kids. Um, I have two kids in middle school and one kid in, in, in high school. It's going to be unique and interesting um, this school year with online courses and sending the kids. And I feel that um, we are here to provide the right tools um, to those heroes that are going to take care of our kids and make it seamless and, and provide the right uh, tools um, uh, to meet their communication needs. Fabulous. Uh, Kelly? Yeah, uh, thank you for uh, allowing us to share our product. I think it's a great product. It allows for seamless communications between all of the school officials, between partner districts and so forth, and allows us uh, that seamless communication between our first responders. And coming from that kind of background, it's important that we have the same information at the same time and we're all playing off the same uh, playlist. So um, yeah, it's. I, I would encourage people to take a look at Crisis Go and see how it can help them um, because we are really in it together. Uh, the school can't handle these crises by themselves. We need our um, community partners and this is a way to keep them connected and communicated during um, any crisis or emergency, not just the, uh, the COVID. So yeah, check us out at crisisgo.com and we'd be happy to help you. Great, thank you. And Matt? <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Martha. I'm uh, really pleased to be here and thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to talk about uh, Predictable Ride and Safe Bus. Uh, just wanna remind you, it's the first of its kind communication and transportation management platform. And when you, Pair that up with the FirstNet ecosystem of great apps like Enhanced Push to Talk, Crisis Go, uh, the other apps that are in the, the uh, FirstNet App Store. Uh, it, it's really fantastic. And then you put that all on top of the FirstNet network. And so in the event of, of an emergency when other networks are down or overloaded, you have the preemption and priority of FirstNet. You have the ability for FirstNet to bring in uh blimps and, and drones and trucks and and such to, to set up these uh ad hoc networks that that uh are able to, to allow you to keep communicating and building uh, devices and, and and building apps on top of this platform in my mind is just a uh, adds a a critical factor of safety and reliability that 
uh, only benefits schools and, and parents and first responders. And so bringing all this together is, is uh, uh, as a parent myself, you know, I, I see this as, as really a, a great uh, opportunity for schools and, and a great way for schools to, to get the types of systems that they need. Well, thank you, Matt. Your, your comments are spot on when it comes to really the synergistic effort that's going on between network development and the ecosystem. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. And thank you to all of our presenters. We hope that you enjoyed our webinar today and felt that it was time well spent. We deeply appreci appreciate your participation. And again, we are the Public Safety Broadband Technology Association, and we want to be your advocate for all aspects of FirstNet utilization. By being here today, you help support our efforts to continually bring you cutting edge information on FirstNet, the nation's only fully dedicated mission critical first responders network and all aspects of the ecosystem that is being purpose built to your advantage. Please visit our webpage at thepsbta.org for more information on the association, our upcoming webinars and recordings of all of our previous webinars. In appreciation for your attendance today, you will receive a free membership to our association for 2020. Also, let your friends and peers know that by attending one of our webinars, it includes a free membership to the PSBTA, which is a $75 value as a gift from us while we are all trying to navigate our current situation dealing with COVID-19. Finally, consider visiting allthingsfirstnet.com as well. Their team continually compiles valuable information on FirstNet and the developing ecosystem. This concludes our webinar, Returning to Schools, Are You Ready, Part One. Please join us next week at the same time for our webinar on Returning to School, Are You Ready, Part Two. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.